Pieces Concrete Structure We will be going through these contents. What are pre-stressed concrete structures? The concept of pre-stressing, behavior of pre-stressed concrete members, the different types of pre-stressing, what are the materials used for this and the applications of pre-stressed concrete. So we come across a lot of infrastructure projects like high scraper buildings, flyovers, bridges, metro rail projects where these pre-stress concrete is being used. So let us see how this works. What are the basic concepts of pre-stressing? Many of us would have come across this video. So as we know like this watermelon is a very uh, strong object as such. And in this video you can see the rubber bands are stretched put around the watermelon. So the rubber band is under tension and it causes some force on this watermelon. So the rubber bands are also stretched and the watermelon is having some kind of stress over it and when n number of rubber bands are put finally this uh, fruit breaks. Another example we can see a pack of cards where we hold it together. I'll just show you the direction where I'm going to talk about compression or tension. So when I'm trying to pull out these cards in this uh, direction I mean to say that I am trying to apply tension on this deck of cards and this would be the compressive stress uh, compressive force direction so generally when we hold these uh, pack of cards tightly we uh, everything is sticking together and uh, slowly we can remove the cards in the tension direction imagine this has been held with the rubber band so again this rubber band is uh, stressed or stretched and it causes some extra compression to this pack of cards so now when I want to remove few cards from this in that tension direction it is going to uh, we need to apply more force these are all analogous to this pre-stressing so uh, the basic concept of pre-stressing had started uh, centuries back so the Two of the main examples where pre-stressing can be uh, understood, one is this wheels, the spokes in the wheels and the other is the barrow, we are going to see that. So in this cycle you can see that if you have just the tire around the cycle, uh, I mean just the tire, when we apply force on the top, it is supposed to you know expand, instead of circle it, is, it should elongate and become like an ellipse. But it doesn't happen, it maintains that circle because we have these spokes in between which causes this pre-stress and it tries to maintain in the equilibrium always. Similarly, in this uh, barrel if you see, we all uh, have wooden staffs which are all uh, standing vertical in this direction and the horizontal uh, direction we have certain metal bands. So these barrels generally are used to store liquid, large amounts of liquid, right? So from the liquid inside the barrel, there is going to be kind of some internal pressure that is being exerted. So when there is too much of pressure, uh, there are chances that these this wooden barrel or the wooden staffs might try to explode. But these metal bands, it will cause the compression from outside and it will hold the barrel very tight. So these metal bands are actually stressed, already it is stretching like that rubber band we have seen in the previous examples. So it is already in a stress and it tries to push the barrel inside. So even after you pour the liquid inside, the uh, internal pressure and this uh, compression will just get nullified. So this just shows you the wooden staffs are just held and then the metal band the exact size will be fitted so that it just causes the compression on the outside. So what is pre-stressing? The pre-stressed concrete structure is obviously different from the conventional reinforced concrete structure and this is due to the application of an initial load on the structure prior to its use. So this pre-stress enables the structure to counteract the stresses arising during its service period. So it is an intentional application of a predetermined force on a system 
for assisting the internal stresses that may be developed in the system due to external loads. So when we say service period, we have a beam. So unless some other additional load is happening once the building has been started to use, until then we assume there is no load on that other than the self-weight. So in that case itself, this pre-stressed concrete beam will have the additional stresses, pre-stresses. We are already stressing it and keeping it so that when the service load uh, actually happens, it is able to contract even better than the reinforced cement concrete beam. So any simply supported beam, if you analyze like this, when we have load from the uh, top, the transverse loads, we generally have compress compressive stresses on the top fibers and the tensile stresses at the bottom fiber. This is the general behavior that we all know. So when we come across these pre-stressed concrete beams, so before the service, or when it is put to use before itself, we are applying, trying to apply some, uh, these are pre-stressing tendons, steel wires basically, uh, you can imagine like the elastic rubber band. So that is inserted in this concrete beam at the bottom, like you can see in this diagram. And these uh, wires or the tendons are stretched and because of that, you can see an upper camber, this upward slope of the beam. So here we are applying some compression force to the concrete. The tendons are stretched are un and in tension, but the concrete itself will try to compress when this tension is removed. And therefore, you have these upward camber. So before, uh, so this is happening only when there is the self-weight and this additional pre-stressing is done. The third diagram or the last diagram that is showing is when the service load is applied. So already it is in the upper upward curve uh, concave uh, shape and on top of it when you apply the load, the beam will just try to become horizontal and it can carry more load and only after that it is going to really sag down. So the materials used, there are a dif different construction materials that we use and based on the applications, whether you want to resist compression, resist tension or at places where you think that it will experience both compression and tension, we are going to use different materials. So reinforced concrete itself is a combination of concrete which is very good in compression and the steel reinforcement bar which is good in tension. So in pre-stressed concrete also we are going to use the combination of concrete and steel but here we are going to use a very high strength concrete and high strength steel and this will give you the combination of pre-stressed concrete. So the high stress concrete has a lot of advantages like it has high compressive stress so like we see initially we are trying to give some pre-stress more of compressive stresses so it should be able to withstand that and that is happening that can uh, is done I mean good in high strength concrete. It can offer high resistance to tension, shear, bond and bearing. It has lesser shrinkage effect. Uh, to have high models of elasticity and smaller creep strain resulting in lesser loss of pre-stress and minimum grade of concrete we would use is M30 and this is the minimum cement comment, uh, content limit and we have certain uh, design code books with which we are going to design the pre-stress concrete members. When we take high tensile steel, the basic uh, concept is when we say uh, normal mild steel, it might have working stress of 120 megapascal, whereas in high strength steel, it can go up to 1200 to 2100 MPa, so which means it has a lot of elastic property also. It can take up a lot of stress. So, and these high strength steel will be used in the forms of wires, cables, or strands. Those will be called as the tendons. So, the pre stressing methods. So, we know now that uh, we are using some tendons and we are stretching the tendons. And when that stretching force is removed, the tension force is removed, the tendons will try to come back to its original position by which the concrete is compressed. So because of that, the concrete is pre-stressed, it is getting stressed. 
so how this is done is the tension force uh, to the tendons is given uh, done by some pre stressing uh, devices and the methods are one is called as pre tensioning the other is the post tensioning so now this animation shows you how to do pre tensioning so in pre tensioning we will have this blue color line is the pre stressing strands or the tendons so the tendons are pulled on this left and right you have some kind of abutment or stands so uh, on the either side of these abutments these tendons will be locked and then these tendons are being pulled or the tension force is applied by additional external jacks and when these jacks pull the uh, tendons completely in this stretched position we have moles in between where this concrete is cast so these two gray rectangles are the concrete we pour the concrete the concrete gets hardened it gets set and once the concrete is set then this jack is removed the tension force is removed so what happens this pre stressing strand will try to come back uh, contract again because of which this concrete is going to get compressed and therefore we get this upward camber here so in pre stressing uh, in pre tensioning we stretch the wire we pour the concrete once the concrete is stressed uh, concrete is set and then the pre tension is removed next we see the post tensioning so in post tensioning we have concrete moles we will have uh, the required number of reinforcement the reinforcement cage will be there now in this case we are not going to uh, insert the tendons pre stressing tens tendons instead of that we will have some kind of aluminum or plastic duct along uh, within the mold so you just have this gray color duct like a pipe you can imagine and over this the concrete is poured then the concrete gets hardened it gets set after the concrete is set within this duct inside this we uh, insert the pre stressing uh, tendons it is pulled along the other side and then the hydraulic jack is um, used to pull these wires so now this concrete is already set after the concrete is set these uh, steel wires are stretched and it is being stressed once the requ uh, required amount of stress has been applied and then these this tension force is removed once the tension force is removed from the wires this concrete will again have this upward camber because it experiences the compression so inside the duct uh, once you actually insert the tendons there will be some gap and that is also filled using this grout so this is post tensioning so major difference that you see is in pre tensioning you ten give tension to the wires then pour concrete the concrete is set and then you cut the wires in post tensioning the concrete is poured it is set after the concrete is set we are applying tension to these steel wires the applications of pre stress so pre stress concrete uh, members can be used if whenever you want very long span so generally for the bridges or flyovers like we see auditoriums stadiums it can be for any uh, large high buildings and any for aesthetical view also it is going to be an advantage uh, it is you can bring it to any form of uh, shape also so these are few examples from india so it can be generally used for any infrastructure project wherever it is required even silos nuclear power plants and so on and flat slabs and last span construction as we said for the auditoriums and public spaces so eugene fresenet he is called the father of pre stress concrete so like we saw that pre stressing concept was used in the wheels in the ba uh, barrels centuries ago the structural application was discovered by eugene fresenet so he is a french civil engineer 
who successfully developed this priestess concrete especially the concrete beams or girders and he introduced the use of high strength concrete and high strength steel and he himself has completed a, um, a few long span bridges and that is why he is called the father of priestess concrete thank you